Hi everyone, welcome back to the answering of some questions of those of you who submit them. There are quite a few questions. I am making my way through them as the Lord allows me and gives me capacity to sit down and go through them. I will answer them. So please be patient. I have received all of yours. And for any of you else who have questions, please feel free to submit it on our question form on our website. I'll put the link down in the description of this video for you so that you can go and fill it out. I will get to them. It just takes a bit of time and given the capacity that the Lord allows. So here is a question from a brother in Christ in the US. And he basically asked, do you always pray out loud and whom are we praying to? And that is quite an interesting question that some people might have. So when we look at 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 13, we basically look at Hannah that was praying to the Lord because she didn't have any children and she really wanted children. But she wasn't praying out loud in that chapter. She was basically just praying between herself and the Lord silently. So much so that Eli thought that she was drunk because he just saw her lips moving, but no sound came out of her mouth. And we also see in 1 Corinthians 14 verses 27 to 28 that if anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or three at most, each in turn, and let one interpret. But if there is no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and God. Now that, of course, is referring to tongues and speaking in tongues, because if there's not an interpreter, no one really knows what the person is saying, basically, in tongues. So then it's encouraged for that person to just basically speak to himself and God. So you can kind of see like um, almost a silent prayer in that form as well, even though they might just between them and the Lord speak out loud in tongues as well. But it was just basically so that the people can be silent if they don't have an interpreter, so people don't really, uh, you know, kind of get confused about what this person is saying and so forth. Now, when we look at our day to day scenarios, you might need to pray silently to the Lord because let's say you find yourself in a situation where you're around unbelievers and you see something happening and you might not necessarily be able to pray out loud in that moment for them or their situation you can pray silently because God still hears our prayer silently. We know that, right? Because God heard Hannah's prayer and she did conceive Samuel. But out loud is probably the preferred one when we can do so. And the reason for that is when we look at Proverbs 18 verses 21, it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. And we also know that God spoke creation into being. He wasn't silent when he created it. You see, our words, they basically are life that we speak out. So when you pray, you basically get edified as well when you hear what you are praying in your spirit rather than just inside of you. And your words, when you speak life and pray life, that has an impact, as we already know, because God spoke his words um, into being. And so because we are created in the image of God, we basically follow his example. And when we look at Jesus and the accounts of Jesus in the Bible, when he prayed, we see that he prayed out loud, right? He, he prayed to the Father and all those around him heard. Now, I'm sure there were probably times when he would just speak to him and, and, and the Father without speaking out loud. We don't know, really, because it's not recorded in Scripture. But we basically see him in front of the disciples and things speaking out loud to God. So you can do both, but the out loud is probably preferred because it can bring that life into the atmosphere. And so who do we pray to? Now, I think it's important for us to not get religious about this. OK, in what I mean by that is don't go pointing finger and saying, oh, but you didn't say in Jesus name. So therefore your prayer is not counted because that is also not true. When we look at the Old Testament, people always pray to God because Jesus had not yet come and God still heard their prayers. OK, and we also see that Jesus, when he taught his disciples how to pray, Jesus taught them with our father who art in heaven. And he didn't, when we look at that prayer in Luke 11 verses 2 to 4, he didn't end it by saying, and in my name, because Jesus had not yet been crucified at that point in time. So he taught his disciples how to pray to God the Father before his crucifixion. And then when we basically look at John 14 verses 13 to 17, 
Jesus then told them that he was about to be crucified and he then said to them that whatever they then ask in his name that he will do and that the father may be glorified in the son and if you ask anything in Jesus name he will do it and also John 16 verses 23 and in that day you will ask me nothing most assuredly I say to you whatever you ask the father in my name I will give you so there Jesus introduced that principle of whatever you ask father God now in my name that he will give you simply because God honors Jesus' sacrifice on the cross for us because Jesus made that way so that we can go directly to the Father, right? He acts like that bridge um, that, that allows us to enter into the Father's presence with righteousness that we receive from Jesus. And therefore, it is basically now placed there to ask in Jesus' name. And you might ask, but what about the Holy Spirit? Now, we know that John 14 verses 26 says that the Holy Spirit is our helper whom the Father sends in His name. He helps us to pray. So, you know, just remember that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are three in one. They are their own parts as such, but they're also united. So if you now actually pray to Father God and you forget to say in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit hears it anyway. Okay, because you already have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And that's what I mean by don't get too caught up with the religiosity of it. But basically applying that principle of asking in Jesus name is a vital component because I believe it's just honoring Jesus for the sacrifice that he made. And it basically is our way to go to the Father's throne confidently. So I hope that answers that question for you. God bless you.